you. Today on Seattle Refined. So, Michelle, you've heard of the um, show Comedians in Cars Getting oh, Coffee? God, of course. Okay. I watch it religiously. Okay, so this is not oh, that. This is <laughs> Refined goes for a ride with soap superstar Michelle Stafford as she spills the tea on GH and more. Plus, a bachelor bombshell. We can talk to for like a few minutes. Don't touch me. If you cringe through last night's season finale, don't worry, the refined team feels your pain. Then, long before Starbucks, there was Cohn and Steiner. Being a community meeting space where people can come together is a driving force. It's in my DNA. A Seattle woman gives her great grandfather's legacy new life. Seattle Refined starts now. Hi everybody, welcome to Seattle Refine, I'm Gerd Swanson. You know, when it comes to daytime drama, there is no brighter or more talented star than General Hospital's Emmy Award winning Michelle Stafford. Me. Old friend, are you kidding me? An old friend, when did this happen? Whether she's playing crazy, sexy, cool, or even inebriated, fans of GH can't get enough of Stafford's character, Nina Clay. But there's a lot more to Michelle Stafford than meets the eye. Not only is she a great actress, she's also a single mother of two and an entrepreneur. Refine's Malia Karlinski got to spend the day with Michelle on her recent visit to the Northwest. <gasps> really? General Hospital is a long way from SeaTac Airport, which is why we wanted to greet Michelle Stafford in style. Yay, so good to see uh, so you. Welcome, see you. welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, We're so thrilled you. you're here. The actress was in town to lend her star power to the main stage and to meet her fans, all at our Como So Northwest Women show at the Tacoma Dome. So, Michelle, you've heard of the um, show Comedians in Cars Getting oh, Coffee? Oh, God, of course. Okay. I watch it religiously. Okay, so this is not oh, that. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is our version. This is talking in a town car on the way to Tacoma. Hey, I like it. I like the tea. Because I have you here, I have got to tell you, I am a huge General Hospital fan. Are you? I really am. I think our 55 anniversary. 55 year. years. That's incredible. Yeah, so I think so. What's it like being part of that legacy? Um, it's really great because I watched it. And has a problem with me staying here. When you first joined the cast, your um, character, Nina Clay, yes. was in a wheelchair for a long time. But she, she was. wasn't actually, she didn't yeah, need she to be in the wheelchair. She wasn't in the wheelchair because she was lying. She came back out of a coma and she was really upset that everybody had moved on. And she had some issues that she's addressed. <laughs> she's addressed and now she's okay. So um, what do you love about Nina? I love that Nina is fun and she's like somewhat childlike. But you didn't steal the necklace. No. No, I would never steal from you. Is Nina back with Valentin? Yes, she is back with Valentin. There's kind of some good chemistry there. Is there? I love uh, James. He's awesome. I was very sad to see that your on-screen brother, Nathan, passed away. Yeah, Sorry about that. I know. You make me better. I guess he has that effect on people. So can you give us any, like, a little tiny scoop about what's going on with Nina and what's going to be happening with her? Um, Nina is sort of becoming really strong for everyone else, right? And I like the way that they're writing Nina right now. I really like this Nina. She's she's really being there for her sister-in-law. And I think, um, I think they they might be toying with Nina wanting to take Maxie's baby. They might, <gasps> they might. Nina. Your skin looks so great just getting off the plane. It, if we didn't love you, we'd hate you, okay? So what's the deal? How do you do that? Since you ask, I have an uh, organic and natural skincare line called Skin Nation. If you care about putting something good on your skin, something that's actually healthy, use these products. My sister was um, diagnosed with stage three breast cancer five years ago, so I started studying uh, toxins and carcinogenics that are in the food, and I came across finding so many chemicals, like horrible chemicals that are in the skincare. Women are having so many issues with their hormones, I, I could bet that that contributes to it. I wanted to create um, an organic and natural skincare line that everybody could afford. So how's your sister doing now? She's great, five years cancer free. Congratulations. Five years. You are a single mom of two kids. Yeah. So you're a full-time actress, you run this uh, skincare empire, and then you've got the two kids. And you seem like you're not crazy, so how do yeah, you do it? I seem that way, right? I seem that way. Yeah. Um, I am crazy, first okay. of all. So. <laughs> and uh, second is delegate. Okay. I've learned. 
because I used to take it all on. What are their names and how old are they? Natalia and Jameson. And Natalia is eight and Jameson is two. So we're taking you to the Northwest Women's Show. I You're going to be it. on stage with all these ladies who are your fans, who know about your skincare line. Yeah. I, I love talking to women. I, I love inspiring women. Michelle Stafford. From the fictional Port Charles to on stage at the Tacoma Dome, Michelle Stafford's star always shines. Malia Karlinski, Seattle Refined. To learn more about Michelle and her Skin Nation line, head to SeattleRefined.com. You'll also find highlights from the So Northwest Women Show. If you watched last night's finale of ABC's The Bachelor, you know it was seriously messed up. This morning I woke up and I thought about you and I thought about you and our kids together. I thought about us when we were old. And I choose you today, but I choose you every day from here on out. At the end of the finale, Ari popped the question to Becca Kay. But then, in a heartbreaking twist, Ari pulled a switcheroo and ditched Becca to pursue a relationship with runner-up Lauren B as cameras oh captured the entire breakup. Hey, are you okay? Leave. What are you still doing here? Oh. Ouch, that's cold. Now, this is not unprecedented. In season 13 of The Bachelor, Kirkland's Jason Mesnick gave the rose to Melissa, then changed his mind and got married to runner-up Molly. But it worked out, they're still together. There's an impossibility of maybe reconciling But back to last night's Bachelor hot mess. Seattle Refine teamed up with 106.9 for a Bachelor watch party last night at Safeco Field. And most fans could not believe their eyes and ears. But this lady says she saw the writing on the wall. Come on, we saw this coming a mile a minute. So we just are excited to see what happens in the aftermath of what's going to happen because I don't know, like how is he gonna redeem himself after this? I guess we'll see tonight when the Bachelor After the Rose special airs tonight at eight right here on Como 4. Good news, if you're a fan of Amazon's new cashierless Go store, looks like you'll see more of them coming soon. Amazon's flagship high-tech convenience store at 7th and Blanchard lets folks walk in, grab grub, and exit and pay without waiting in line. The concept is so popular, Amazon reportedly plans on opening as many as six more Amazon Go's in Seattle and Los Angeles. We'll let you know where as soon as we find out. If you like your corner store a little less high tech, but more upscale, chances are you are a fan of Seattle's Code and Steiner. Founded in 1915, the general store sells everything from toilet paper to gourmet sandwiches around the city. We sent Refine's Brandon Bernstead out to do a little shopping. Conan Steiner is not your average corner store. When I'm in Conan Steiner, I don't want to leave. They make the annoying things less annoying. It's almost like they're anticipating what I need before I have the need. Conan Steiner feels like an extension of my kitchen or living room. See what I mean? Danny Cohn's take on the neighborhood market may be thoughtful and unique, but it's not new. In fact, it's more than 100 years old. In my childhood home, we had the old picture of my great-grandfather's original Conan Steiner. And I just, there was something captivating about that for me. After immigrating to Seattle from Eastern Europe, Sam Cohn and his brother-in-law, last name Steiner, opened a general store in Soto, right where the Starbucks building sits today. And that's just where you would go on a frequent basis. You would go to get your basics. You would go to uh, run into your neighbors and see what's new, you know, and find out the news. This was a real community gathering spot. Danny never got the chance to meet her great-grandfather. He passed away before she was born, but his legacy lives on with three Conan Steiner locations now scattered throughout Seattle. It may be a modern take on the original store, but the vision remains the same. There's just nothing that takes the place of that experience of people coming together over good food and drink. And so in the, in the busyness of daily life, I wanted to bring back that corner store, you know, that place where community happens. That C word, community, is at the heart of everything Conan Steiner does. It's all about serving the needs of the people. That means a mix of basic products and Seattle specialties. Eve's Crackers, Mustard and Company, Kale Love. It's a legit one-stop shop. They've got a full coffee bar, local beer on tap, even a soda fountain. Depends on the time of day, but I gotta say, this coconut lime kombucha, people are 
just going crazy for. It's off the hinges. If you like kombucha yeah. at all, this is the one to try. Oh, this looks great. I like the color here. It's ridiculously good. It's yeah. fresh, it's refreshing. Oh, that's so that's a one that like I want a growler of almost to just take home and keep in my fridge. And so is the food at the sandwich counter, all made with bread from local bakeries. For the garden toast, Seawolf seeded sourdough covered with house-made herb butter cream cheese and tomato jam. It's topped with avocado, greens, and an herb vinaigrette. That's the garden toast. Even the classic turkey sandwich gets the Conan Steiner treatment, topped with fresh cut veggies and sun-dried tomato pesto. Naturally, I've got to do a taste test. The veggies are what make this, right? They're fresh. They keep it a little bit light, but you still got that cheese melting in. That's a really nice sandwich. That's the thing about Conan Stein. Everything's done with an eye toward making folks happy. It's a place to stop by or sit down and stay a while. A community meeting place, just like great grandpa Sam wanted it to be all those years ago. I hope every day that he's up there somewhere proud, I don't, or, or at least satisfied with uh, this representation of what he built. For Seattle Refined, I'm Brandon Bernstead. To learn more about Conan Steiner, log on to the website. Seattle Refine is just getting started. How do you like them apples? The local chef turning out tasty and savory apple dishes. Yeah, I'm so glad you're doing that, not me. But first. Oh. Oh. <laughs> How come I can't hit that? I give Seattle's new Ping Pong Palace a test run. Find out why it's so much more than just table tennis. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Refine, I'm Gard Swanson. You know, no matter where I go, when I tell people I'm from Seattle, they always bring up three things. The rain, of course, wine, and apples. Every year, our state produces 125 million boxes of apples. Washington Grown's Christy Gorenson shows us how one chef in the heart of apple country is preparing these tasty treats. We're in the heart of apple country at Bone Vino's Bistro, a spot where the locals can always count on a unique variety of dishes. Well, it's one of the places in town that have a good variety of food. We tried to add a little more to the community and, and give them a little more variation. With a focus on breakfast and lunch, owner and chef Roger Hazard works to incorporate fresh and local produce from growers all around the Yakima Valley. We're going to do something with apples today? Yes, we are. Um, we're going to do a braised beef with a red wine apple gomada. Also, we're going to do a caramel apple butter uh, carrot Yum. to go with that, too. We're going to get cooking with our beautiful Washington apples. We start with our red delicious apples and slice them into cubes. What do you love about using apples in, in your cooking? And like, we're doing savory dishes, but yeah. with apples. That's yeah, exactly. Cool. That's And that's one thing nice about it, it's not just a fruit that uh, that for like desserts you had to, and stuff. Yeah, to eat and, and enjoy and uh, apple pies and stuff. Uh -huh. I mean, we can also implement these in uh, cooking. With our apples sliced, we start to make a caramel sauce by melting butter and brown sugar. We'll get it nice to the point where it's a nice bubble, nice roaring bubble. That's the only thing that you really got to watch out for uh, is overcooking it so it doesn't get hard on you. Sure. Because uh, then we'd have to make candy. Yeah, exactly. We don't want to <laughs> make candy. Once it's melted down and ready, it needs a little flame. Randy adds some brandy and sprinkles of cinnamon to flambe the caramel. <laughs> Woo! Uh, yeah, I'm so glad you're doing that, not me. <laughs> so apples coming like? next? Yep. Oh, yep. okay. Just dump them right in there. Okay. Okay. It's starting to smell like ball in there, you know? Yeah, I like know, that. isn't that awesome? Then we add blanched carrots to the batch and top it off with salt, pepper, and dried cranberries. I think they look beautiful. They do look beautiful, I agree. Okay. And then we'll put them in this bowl. Super colorful dish. A nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, can't wait to try these. Time to get a taste of these unique savory apple dishes. Okay, now let's do them. We gotta try the carrot. carrots and apples. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Sweet, caramely. What a great idea. Look for more stories like that one from our friends at Washington Grown every week right here on Refine. Coming up, 
Grab your paddles. We are checking out the newest hipster craze to sweep Seattle. <laughs> How come I can't hit that? I have the dream job. But first, a record store that will be music to your ears. Welcome back to the show. I'm Gary Swanson. Now, if you're like me, this is the sort of pong you grew up with. Okay, admittedly, Atari's Pong lacks a little excitement, which is probably the reason I never got into this kind of Pong. Now, in my opinion, that's exciting. And these days, a lot more people agree with me. Ping Pong or Table Tennis, as it's sometimes called, is the hipster pastime of the moment. And now Seattle has its very own Paddle Palace. Take a walk down this staircase, 32 steps to be exact, and you'll find a Ping Pong Paradise. It's called Spin, 10,000 square feet of fun. The perfect spot to hang out, especially with Swedish national champion, Malin Pedersen. We have 12 ping pong tables. We have a private room uh, with a private bar, three ping pong tables in there. We also do a lot of cool stuff and events like uh, Players Night on Friday nights, where we have professional ping pong players. Uh, we have live music entertainments, and we uh, do lessons and and stuff like that. Spin recently started on the East Coast and is one of the hottest bars around. And if you like to pound more than just ping pong balls, paddle your way to the bar. Here you go. So what am I drinking here? You're drinking our seasonal meal. And what's in it? Uh, this is a vodka inspired drink. Cool. That's good. It's strong too. It is a little strong. And then the artwork here. I mean, you got Bruce Lee staring you down here and you got Jimi we Hendrix do. over here in the corner. Yes. We're all about local artists and, and art on the wall. Why is that important to make it so local and so community-based? I mean, it's something that we try to do as we're uh, going to different cities. We think it's important to get the culture of the city and, and put our spin twist on it as well. And let me get this straight again. You were the Swedish national champion? That's right. I, I need you to prove that. All right. Game on. Let's, let's go. Let's go play. Yeah. Oh. 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 How come I can't hit that? After a while, I finally got the hang of it. And then people can come down and watch good players, right? Yeah, exactly. Every Friday night we do something called Players Night. And then professionals are playing, uh, battling it out. They're also giving lessons. Oh, nice shot. Nice shot. Awesome shot. Thank you. Got you got a great place here. Yes. To learn more about Spin, log on to the website. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Refine, I'm Gard Swanson. You know, if you love music like I do, then you know all about the recent boom in vinyl record sales. Last year, vinyl albums hit a new record high in sales. And as Dan Rascone reports, the trend is music to the ears of a Utah couple whose romance is a rock and roll love story. There's some really rare stuff out of print. Michael Macaron is living the good life. I have the dream job. Love it. He runs this old school vinyl record store in Salt Lake. Looks like my bedroom did when I was 15 years old. Songs to me, it's emotion, it's memories of my past. In 2010, while on Facebook, he reconnected with a gal he met back in 1980 at a punk rock bar in New York. Her name, Pam Lancaster, a young woman who once was a head of makeup and wardrobe at MTV. That's me and downtown Julie Brown. This is Pam today. <laughs> she remembers well meeting Michael back in the 80s. He would greet me, pick me up, swing me around, hug me and send me on my way because I actually had a boyfriend in the past. The two eventually hooked up in Utah and on October 16, 2015, they opened up Sound and Vision Vinyl. The store may be selling old school vinyl records, but according to Michael and Pam, vinyl records are making a comeback in a big way. It's like going to the movies. It's, it's, it's an audio movie for you to enjoy. It's a really big business again. I know it's shocking when you're not connected to that. Everything out here on the open floor, of course, is for sale. But back here, some coveted items, not for sale. A lot of albums, and over here, some 45s. There's some stuff I have to keep for myself. Over the years, this is my Paul McCartney autographed receipt of him buying records. The two have met Blondie, David Bowie, dozens of famous rock stars. This is Cheap Trick. But the true joy still happens here. I remember looking at that cover a lot when I was a kid. And Inside the record store, where memories really do come to life. 
All right, that's going to do it for today's show. I'm Gart Swanson. Thanks for joining us right here on Seattle Refined. We will see you next time.